Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein, and this is Vehicle Virgins. Just got the E63 all washed up, thanks to my boy Anthony. It is looking cleaner than ever. I do not clean my cars enough, and we got the Lamborghini all clean as well. Today, we're gonna do a bunch of stuff on the E63. I'm gonna get those new brake pads installed at Avant Garde, then I'm gonna go over the bedding procedure for what happens when you get new brake pads. What do you have to do in order to not ruin them right away and make it as safe and as squeakless as possible. Then I think since the vehicle is tuned, we're gonna have to get some zero to 60 and zero to 100 poles to see how much faster it is than stock. Let's roll. I'm actually really stoked to get these new brake pads. Obviously not a big deal whatsoever, but now I can finally push this car harder because when they were low, I didn't feel like driving aggressively. I knew I just needed to get it in as soon as possible. That's really key guys. If your brake pads are low, please just get it fixed as soon as possible so you don't end up with a brake pad failure. And also the squeaking is just really embarrassing. So I'm excited to be over with that. This is LA traffic in a nutshell. Two Priuses next to each other, just kill me. Two Priuses and a Ghibli all in one shot. Back again. So I've got one of the brand new pads in my hand right now and it's actually staggering how much thicker this is than what my pads currently are. It's about 11 millimeters thick, just the pad thickness, not including the backing plate. Now I'm at like three or four millimeters. We also have the wear sensors. Take a look at this. So this is the actual wear sensor here. And when the brake pad wears down low enough, it starts actually grinding on these wires, creating an open circuit and that flicks on the light. But if you look at it from the side, check out how low profile this actual wear indicator is. So you're only got like two millimeters of brake pad left before this flicks on. With that being said, if you have a new 2018 E63 and your brake light does come on, absolutely take it to the shop immediately because you don't have much pad life left. And then you'll end up ruining your rotors and the brake job will be a heck of a lot more expensive. Apparently these rotors are about $1,200 each and I don't really wanna to have to do that on my brand new car right now. Oh. I picked up a friend on the way over here. He's not having the best day. <laughs> that is disgusting. Oh, this is a, Ow! This is a grasshopper, bro. I have a grasshopper in my freaking front bumper? Yeah. It turns out it's alive. Or no, you're, you're screwing with me? No, he just moved. He just moved? It's not moving now. Oh, that's alive, yep. All right, now we got dual action. We'll try to save it, but I don't think it has a prayer, really. Oh. Oh, here it goes. Oh, no. Check this out, it's really hard to see, but there's actually tiny little wires on the Mercedes emblem, either for the front cameras and sensors, or it might even be a defroster so that the star is always present. So because these aren't carbon ceramics, they're steel rotors, oftentimes people will actually turn the rotors to remove some of the debris left on it from the old pad and also some etching. You can't do that below a minimum thickness, but these still have a lot of life left, so we're debating on doing that. So check this out. This is the old brake pad compared to the new one. It has to be nearly triple the thickness. All right, check this out, guys. Behind me is the intake plenum from a stock Lamborghini Huracan. I'll throw a picture up of what it's supposed to look like, but this one, a little bit of fire damage. The crazy part is that this side of the plenum is actually supposed to be identical to this side, but it's melted so much it almost looks nothing like it. I mean, it looks like it was taken over by a volcano. And then when we flip it over, It's a lot less damaged under here, but oh my God. Yeah, that's not fixable. If anyone knows if this is an igneous or a metamorphic intake, let me know in the comment section below. Here's a little look inside of the brake components in the front of the E63, caliper hanging down there on a bungee cord, perfect. And then check out how big this actual rotor is. That is insane. Check this out. So originally these rotors were drilled and slotted, but there is so much buildup from the brake pads that every single one of the holes is actually plugged. These are supposed to go all the way through and they don't so I've been given the intense responsibility of poking holes through them. <laughs> There's something crazy we are trying to figure out on both my E63 and the Huracan and a few other cars the right side so the passenger side brake pad has worn a little bit more than the driver side has doesn't really make any sense Unless I'm driving a NASCAR track going one way the entire time. That's not the case. But my rotor over there only had the holes plugged 
on this side of the car. Once again, the one with more brake pad wear and the other side didn't. So if you guys know, we can't figure it out. What the reason behind that is, let me know. Stop for gas and I think this is the perfect segue to talk about how to properly bed in your brakes so they last the longest and you're as safe as you can be. So each brake pad manufacturer does have their own kind of formula for bedding in the brakes. But in general, they do have some similarities. So for the first five times you step on the brakes, now it's pretty impossible for it actually to be the first five times because you've got to get it out of the shop but try doing about five stops from 30 miles an hour down to five miles an hour. So press the brake with moderate pressure and then let off when you get to five. You don't wanna stay on the brake for too long because it'll build up too much heat in the new pads. Then after you've done that, press the brake a little harder from 50 miles an hour a couple times and then allow the brakes to cool off. Well, I drove the car around for a bit. I think the brakes are good. So now it is time to do some new zero to 60 and zero to 100 pulls in the tuned E63. Then I'm gonna compare it to the data that the car itself records. I believe it's called track pace and it can actually log the zero to 60 and quarter mile times. Originally, I wouldn't have thought these systems were all that accurate, but after comparing the Trackhawks uh, performance pages to the V-Box and they were identical, I imagine Mercedes, <laughs> you better at least have a similar technology that's able to be that accurate. Now, I never actually got zero to 100 mile per hour times on the E63 as a baseline. So I'm gonna use magazine numbers. Car and driver recorded a zero to 100 mile an hour time of seven seconds. And car and driver is pretty damn good at getting every last 10th of a second out of a car when they're posting their numbers. So seven seconds is the baseline time for a stock E63. Now we've got more power than that so hopefully it will be in the mid to high sixes. For reference, the CTS-V, 650 horsepower sedan, does it in 7.2 seconds, and the Hellcat Charger, 707 horsepower sedan, that actually doesn't weigh all that much more than this, I believe five pounds heavier, does it in 7.4 seconds. What I've really liked about the tune so far, I haven't really talked about my uh, living experience with the VF tune, but it hasn't hindered uh, the driving experience of the car whatsoever. There's never any jerkiness. It doesn't feel like there's too much throttle response in comfort mode, anything like that. It simply just pulls harder. How much harder? I'm not sure yet. I mean, obviously my butt dyno is telling me that the car is faster and the real dyno is also saying that the car is faster, but I haven't raced it against anything yet. It would be cool actually, considering that R8 V10 was pretty much neck and neck with this thing uh, to re-race that after the car is now tuned. I took my radar detector out of the S550. Now it's in the passenger seat here. I've got to hardwire that up. So potentially if you guys are interested on a video, how to hardwire a radar detector, I could make one of those. I made one a long time ago, but perhaps an updated version in the E63. I've been running without a radar in this car for a long time now, and I never drive cars without radar detectors. So it's felt a little bit sketchy to say the least. One thing I am gonna try first is that some people are saying on two tuned AMGs like the E63S, it makes slightly too much power to use launch control. So they're actually stabbing the throttle off the line instead of actually brake boosting and getting the car ready to launch. So maybe we'll try that. I'll do a launch the first one. Oh my God, my phone went flying. <laughs> All right, first run, zero to 62.9 seconds and zero to 100 in seven seconds flat. So considering that was the first run on a non-prep surface, uh, yeah, seven seconds flat is pretty solid. That's what car and driver got. I wonder what the performance data says about that. Let's see, I don't know if it saves it or if you have to have it loaded. Acceleration, it does not have any info from that run. I guess you gotta run it simultaneously. So we will try that. ladies and gentlemen, zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds and zero to 100 in 6.5. That's awesome. Let's see what the Mercedes says we did. Look at that, it plotted a graph, zero to 60, it says in 3.1 seconds, and then zero to 100 in 6.75. So it's a little different from this, as you can say, it says 2.8 and 6.5. Pretty close though. All right, let's run this back at the end. The end of this goes way uphill. I don't know if we're gonna hit 100 before that. Oh, 
front seat. Uh, we're starting to go uphill. Alright, now it's starting to really go uphill. Wow, so uphill, 0 to 60, 2.8. 0 to 100 in 6.7 seconds. I'm gonna show it on the other camera so you can see that again. So on the V-Box, we've got 0 to 60, 2.8 seconds, 0 to 100, 6.7. And on the data logger here, we've got 0 to 60, 2.98 and 6.67 seconds, 0 to 100. All right, for the heck of it, once we get to flat ground here, I'm gonna try a 0 to 60 without doing launch control and see what happens. Oh, that didn't work. 3.4. Yeah, it, it didn't like that. It thought I was activating launch control. I'm, I need to learn what they were talking about there. This is actually a pretty cool readout. So it says it does 0 to 60 and 2.98 for that one run, but it also gives you the number of feet it traveled to hit 60. Right now, I'm going to approximate what 132 feet is to give you a visualization of how fast this car can hit 60 miles an hour. The E63 is sitting right here on the side of the road. I'm going to pace over and see how far away 131 feet is. So funny enough, right at this speed limit sign is 131 feet. So from there, where the car is now, it looks a little bit farther away in the camera. I'll show the other angle from the car back over here. It's able to hit 60 miles an hour from between there and where I'm standing right here. That's pretty wild. That is not that far away. To give you a better idea, there is the car and that's where it would hit 60. Once again, from behind it, here's the car. 45 is where it goes 60 miles an hour. After finally finding my phone, I googled a list of cars that do 0 to 100 miles an hour in six and a half seconds or thereabouts. So here are some cars that are actually slower than the tuned E63. A Ferrari 458 Italia does 0 to 100 in 6.9 seconds, so a tenth faster than a stock E63. A Ferrari Enzo does 0 to 100 miles an hour in 6.7 seconds. So enough said, the E63 is faster than an Enzo. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. Bye.